Disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. Hey everybody, Caleb here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're here with the long-awaited NHD15 install. I mentioned that I'd be doing this in my PC build, I'll link in the description below. This video is taking a little longer than I wanted it to. I had some difficulties along the way, but we're finally here, and I hope y'all enjoy. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna do is unbox it, of course. You can tell by the type of padding they used that they really didn't want this thing getting damaged on the way to you. First up though, we got a package of tools which includes all the mounting hardware plus thermal paste and fan brackets for the two included 140mm fans, which are in the classic Noctua beige and brown. Alright, now that we got all that out of the way, it's time for the big boy heatsink itself, which surprisingly had a very confusing box. I don't know how I got this confused, but as you can see, the second fan is already installed. Let's get this cooler unplugged and get the new one installed. Not bad contact. Now I don't know if this is the correct thing to do, but I'm just going to be reusing the mounting plate from my motherboard. It goes back there. I'm going to quickly clean off the thermal paste while I'm here. Oh, good enough. Now let's get these brackets on. Shout out to Noctua for having the easiest mounting hardware. Installing this was super easy. Now all that's left is to install the heatsink itself. Gonna have to take this fan out to access the two screws to mount it. Alright, so this is where things start to get interesting. Alright, so here we are with the PC and the cooler. I've noticed an issue though. This RAM is making this fan a little too tall. Now, I could take this RAM and you probably can't see it, I'll just move this one. I could probably take this RAM and move it into both of the slots over furthest to the left, but I don't want to do that. Instead of doing that and running the RAM out of dual channel, which would cause a lot of bad things because Ryzen CPU, I'm going to be using this NZXT radiator fan, which I think it's a radiator fan anyway, it's got the rubber seal and vibration mounts, so it should work good. We're going to just be using the normal connectors from the other fan to mount this. So let's get this fan out of here. So I want the wire facing that way. Alright, now that everything's in the computer, I'm going to clean it up and then we're going to get into some benchmarks. So before the install, my temperatures would have been looking about like this, and after the install, they looked like this. That's a significant improvement. Now that we got everything installed, let's get to some benchmarks.
And there we have it. Overall, this cooler as expected was able to keep my CPU under 70 degrees Celsius in pretty much any situation I could throw at it, which I'm pleased about. My main reason for getting this cooler was during streaming or rendering, it would thermal throttle, hitting the performance pretty significantly, and I think I fixed that. The only downside to adding this to my build is because of the extra airflow, the case I have now makes a bit of a howl because of the front filter, but that's not on the cooler. Here, have a listen. Yeah, that's a thing. Kind of funny to be honest. Overall, I'm satisfied with this cooler, and I would recommend it if you're looking for some big chungus cooling. I hope this video was informative in some kind of way, and I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway everyone, I'm Kelby Shobra, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.